Hi everyone, welcome back to our second video. In our last video, we left off by enabling surveys at the project level, and then we went to our online designer and we enabled our nacho craving index form to be a survey, and that led us to this page. And this is gonna be our set up my surveys page. And this is where you can play with the design and customization of the survey itself. So I do wanna go over some of the features on this page. So the first thing that we see is the survey status. So by default, it is active. Um, but say your survey has closed and you need to take it offline, you can go ahead and do that here and choose offline. And then you can add an offline message if you need to. Next, we have the, the basic survey options. We have our survey title. And this is going to be the title that is displayed at the top of the web page for the survey, as well as some survey instructions. So by default, it says, please complete the survey below, thank you. Um, these default survey instructions are not terribly informative or really engaging. So it's helpful to think about the information that you want to provide to your participants about the survey itself. So things like how long the survey will take to be complete, um, as well as how the data will be used. So it's a really great way to you know, establish transparency with your participants. So if you're, if you're project is under IRB, um, the IRB will need to approve the language for the survey instructions. So we do have some survey design options. Um, the first one is going to be the width of the width of survey on the page. And this is going to be the real estate that the survey takes up on the page. And by default, um, we have that fixed width, which will give you a little bit of um, space on the left and right of the survey when it displays. We also have an option for logo, so you can certainly add the institutional logo or a, a project logo if you have one. We also have enhanced radio buttons versus standard buttons. So the enhanced buttons here, we can see they're a little bit larger and they highlight when we scroll over them. Um, or we can use the standard buttons, which are a little bit smaller, so those kind of traditional check marks and um, bubbles for those radio buttons. Um, so I think it's helpful to use the enhanced, um, which will give you a little bit more space, especially for folks that are filling these out on mobile devices or may have you know, dexterity issues. It gives you a little bit more room to select those answers. You can also change the size of the survey text as well as the font and the theme. So you can certainly customize all of this um, and play with the colors. Um, so we do have a specific hex for that very um, purple uh, purple that is used for NYU Lingon House, um, and that will be found in our the brand section of Inside Health. So you can certainly um, play with the colors of the institution and brand that survey um, as much as you like. There are also some default survey themes. Um, this is going to be the default one, um, but we have um, some other ones as well. Um, just be a little careful. Some of these can be bright. Um, and maybe even a little jarring. So, you know, use some good design choices when it comes to playing around with the look and feel of the survey itself. So I do like the default. I think it looks nice. So I'll go ahead and use that one for today. And we also have some customizations. So we have auto numbering. So this will just number based on the sequential numbers of the form, or you can add custom numbers. You can also paginate. Um, so on the in in the online designer, um, you can add section headers to your forms um, and the survey settings will use those section header headers to paginate the form itself. Um, and this is really helpful uh, because you can choose multiple pages based on those section headers, which is helpful if you have a particularly long survey um, that kind of will break, cut down on things like survey fatigue. Um, you also have an option to allow participants to download PDFs, as well as some other ones here. I won't read them all, um, but it is very helpful to go through these things when you're setting up your survey. Um, a few things I do want to point out is that we do have a text-to-speech functionality, which allows text on the survey page to be read out loud. Um, you can turn that on if you need to. Um, and just want to mention that this does go to the IBM Watson text-to-speech API service. Um, and then moving right along, we have the survey access um, section right here. You can set a response limit. Um, basically, this will be a limit or quota um, for survey responses. And after that quota is met, it'll go ahead and um, take the survey offline once, that, once it is met. So say if I wanted 150 
um, responses, completed responses, I can go ahead and choose that, um, or I could choose partial and completed responses. So completed responses means that they have answered all of the questions. Just wanted to mention that, and you can also have a, um, a customized text um, that will display to respond to respondents um, once that survey uh, limit has been reached. Um, a few other options is the time limit for survey completion. So this is going to be based on when the survey was distributed. So when it was emailed out to some other point in time. So say if you wanted it to close or not be available after five days, um, you can go ahead and stipulate that here. Um, otherwise, you can also just set an expiration. So this will be the time after which the survey will become inactive. Um, so say if you wanted to be, you know, later in July at a specific time and date. Um, and then we have save and return later. So you do have an option to have your participants start the survey. Um, and if they don't complete it, they can return to the survey. Um, but by default, this is turned off, but you can turn it on. And if you do so, you do have a few options. Um, the first one is going to be, will they need to return with or without a code? Um, so if this is unchecked, they will need a code um, and the code will be displayed to them. They will need to go ahead and document that and then use it to return. Um, otherwise you can check this, which means that they would not need for that return code. And the section, second option here is to allow respondents to return and modify completed responses. Um, so by default, this means that um, they can submit partial responses and sort of lock those responses, um, and then they can come back and finish it. Um, but you can check this and allow them to modify um, any responses they have already submitted. And then we have the survey termination options, and you do have a few options here. We have auto continued to the next survey. So say if you have more than one survey in your project, um, it would just auto continue to the next survey. Um, optionally, you can also add a conditional, um, which means that some criteria in the first survey has been met. So then they will be taken to that second survey. And you can add that logic here. And if you want a little bit more information about how to build logic, you can do the you can um, check out the how to use this function right here. Um, but we do see an example of how to build logic in REDCap. Um, this is going to be a comp compound um, conditional statement. The first one is going to be our variable age in square brackets is greater than 30. And so it means both of these need to be met for it to, um, to meet that conditional. Um, and then our second one is going to be sex equals one. Um, so within REDCap, we do have those raw values saved. So say there's three options for sex. We have um, you know, male, female, and non-binary, and one relates to female. You can say that this logic means that we're looking for um, females over the age of 30. And that's going to be our conditional that we would add to this box. Um, and if that condition is met, our participants would see that second survey. Um, in addition, you can also have them redirect to a specific URL. So this could be a project page for, you know, for your study or your institutional page, what have you. Um, it would automatically redirect them to that web page. And lastly, we have survey completion text. Um, so this is going to be the follow-up or the thank you for completing the survey um, by default. Um, as mentioned, the, the default is not particularly informative or engaging. It just says, thank you for taking the survey. Have a nice day. You can certainly um, spend a little time and write some, some follow-up um, follow message here. Um, as mentioned, if your study is under IRB, the language for the completed text will also need to be approved by the IRB. Next, we have options related to stop action, <laughs> options related to survey stop actions. Um, so within that online designer, you do have an option to add something called a stop action. And basically this will trigger the survey to end. So say if someone says no to being, um, to saying that they wanted to be involved with this study, you can execute a stop action or say if you have date of birth and you don't want anyone under the age of 18, you can add a stop action. Um, so here, if you have a stop action in your survey, you have um, a few options. 
Um, you can say save all Siri responses regardless of a stop action being triggered, and that's the default. Um, otherwise, you can say, no, I don't want to save any of the survey responses if that stop action is triggered. Um, so this is only relevant if you have a stop action in your form. Okay, and a few other things that I want to mention is the e-consent framework. So we do have a whole series of videos on how to use the e-consent framework in the HSL YouTube channel. Um, so definitely make sure to check them out. Um, but I want to mention that you can use um, the survey settings to set up e-consent. And that basically means that you can um, take your consent paperwork, change it into a file, um, activate surveys, um, and then map certain fields to the e-consent framework, including things like first name, last name, and signature. So as I mentioned, we do have a whole series on e-consent framework. So if you want to use REDCap for your consenting process, I highly recommend you check those out. And lastly, we have send confirmation email. Um, so by default, this is set to no. Um, but if you want to email the response, respondents when they complete the survey, you can go ahead and select yes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes um, and I'm gonna stop the video here. And in our next video, I will go over how to distribute the survey itself.